Hi, this is Joe Gorse with Design World. It's good to have you here with us today. We have Sammy Nijem of Design World and Courtney Gross um, and Tom Vo of Design Flux Technologies. We are going to be talking about the Cozy uh, Business Pitch Competition. They recently had a competition with over 200 entries that got narrowed down to 88, which were then um, individually interviewed, which then got narrowed down to 20, and then there were four. So in, in the final four was Design Flux Technologies, and uh, these are the founders here with us today. And now we are going to talk a little bit about their, their technology. So if you guys could um, tell us the story of Design Flux Technology and how you guys came to be. Sure, definitely. Well, the story really started with us about a year and a half ago. And um, what had happened is that both Tom and myself were busy doing research in the area of battery management, um, just focused on the research, not thinking about business at all. We're both, we both come from an engineering background, so business wasn't really something we were thinking about. But um, one of our advisors came to us and said, hey, there's this business competition. It was the Launchtown business competition uh, from Akron. And he said, you know, I think it would be great if you guys just tried this. A lot of people um, had heard about what we were doing and they thought that it would make a great business idea. So that's really how we got the idea, oh, well maybe this research that we're doing um, could be a great business idea. So that's really how we got started. Um, and then from there it just kind of grew. So after that competition we've been you know, refining our idea, uh, pursuing other competitions, um, and just working at doing our research and prototyping. So what, what, uh, tell us a little bit more about that research, what, what specific things had you been tasked to do, what was your hypothesis, if you would, and, and that type of thing? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, basically, um, with, when you're working with battery packs, um, some of the things that we were looking into is, uh, if, if a battery pack is, un, is used incorrectly, basically, it will allow it to, or it'll make it last a lot less than it was uh, meant to last for. Um, like for example, it was last, uh, supposed to last 2,000 cycles. It only lasts maybe 400 of those cycles if not properly protected. So um, our advisor actually works with large battery packs all the way up to, um, oh, actually he works at NASA and uh, mm. he um, worked on some of the International Space Station battery packs and, and, and modeling for those. And essentially uh, he, he did models and, and predicted that you know, this is how long the battery is going to last, and with proper protection, um, like I said, they'll last their, their, the whole lifetime that they're supposed to last. I see. So, so NASA was really the, the instigator of, of this need, this, this drive, and this research. Uh, is that fair to say? Initially, yeah. Um, and it kind of through that, now our advisor's well connected in the battery community in Ohio. So. Uh, other people come to him when they have problems, and so uh, one of those people was a local uh, electric vehicle company uh, named Myers Motors, and they were having problems with their battery packs. And so they came to our advisor and said, hey, we have this problem, um, would you have the capability to come up with a solution for us? And so that was really uh, a battery management solution, and so that was one of the first projects that I started to work on, uh, was the battery management system for those batteries. So for that was really the start of the research, and I know I, that Tom worked on part of that project too. Uh, so that was just one of the, the issues where a local company came to the university looking for a solution. So that was really the first indication that we had that there was a need for products like this. Great. So so there was a, a market a market drive. So let's let's dive into the the business. So tell us tell us about your target market. And, you know the market cap potential. You know product availability, pricing type, lead time. Mm -hmm those sure. types of things. Sure. Well, really what we're looking at right now is uh, the battery manufacturers because battery manufacturers, well, batteries in general, are really the core of the alternative energy industry. So uh, alternative energy applications, whatever they may be, so you could take solar, um, wind power, electric vehicles, the, the, at the center of all those is really a battery pack. So you need to be able to store that energy. And so as Tom mentioned, the problem with batteries is that you know, over time, because of differences in cell chemistries and they're manufactured, um, some batteries will become more charged or discharged than the others, individual cells, what we're talking about. So if you have a large battery pack trying to store energy for solar panels, say for instance, uh, you're going to need a management system on that. And so um, 
the problem is that there are other people out there doing this right now. So the talk about the battery market is projected to be about $60 billion by 2015. Um, and it reaches out to other markets such as solar and wind, which are kind of adjacent markets that are you know, over $300 billion. So there's really large addressable markets out there. Um, but with us focusing on batteries, um, specifically, I think that you know, as far as lead time for our product goes and how long it's going to take us to get our product out there, um, you know, we're still in the research and development phase right now. So although we have projects that we're testing our prototypes on, um, it would probably take us about maybe another good year of research before we could get it out there. Sure. So, mm -hmm. so just as a rough order of magnitude, um, how how long has it taken to do the um, the the current project with that commercial? Was it Myers? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, well, that started. Let's see. Probably about maybe um, two and a half or three years ago that project started, and it really only took us about a year to come up with a pretty good solution for them. So. Uh, early prototypes of what we would call um, our product, very early prototypes are actually in a lot of their vehicles that they've sold. So uh, that was kind of the first validation of the basis of our technology. It's a very early crude form of it, but it's really uh, the foundation of our, our battery management technology. And, so. and during that time, Myers Motors, they, just, they, they needed protection for their cells themselves, or the battery cells, and they're using them. Um, they have both lead acid and lithium, but um, once they convert to lithium, they need protection for the cells because uh, lithium is more dangerous to work with. Explosive. Mm -hmm. Explosive, yeah. right. So um, uh, at, uh, in addition to that, the, they were having problems. Um, actually, I'm not sure if we can talk about this. But, mm -hmm. well, I, the main problem with them is that they had, they had chargers, they had batteries, they had motor drivers in their car because it's an electric vehicle. And so... The problem there was that they had to find a way to make them integrate and, or integrate those systems together and make sure that they work together because they weren't designed to work together. They, they had to pick parts off the shelf that, and just make it work. And uh, right. their problem was then, again, is protecting the battery pack. It, and um, the, the charger, for example, wasn't, uh, wasn't made specifically for any sp specific battery chemistry or anything like that. It's just you know, a voltage that it needs to get to and a current that it needs to charge at. So, so it was like an open float voltage type yeah, charger. Yeah, right. And nice. so, so it's basically, they, you know, you can't sell that as a product without um, protecting the cells. So that's right. so what they came to us and then uh, we helped them uh, integrate that design better. So from that, we decided that, you know, what a good system would be would be one that is unified in the sense that you have a some type of power source, a charger, whether it be, like Courtney said, a solar panel or an, an outlet that you plug into, um, you manage that um, and it talks to you, your battery pack master of whatever's managing your battery pack. And then um, and also it also controls the discharging, whether it be a motor controller or maybe a, you know, an LED light bulb or something like that. So it protects the battery at all phases, charging and discharging. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so um, Jim, just one last thing in the in the business section. Mm -hmm. So, I, just to sum it up, it seems like you know a year at the longest for integration mm -hmm. into an unknown battery pack. The um, uh, would that be a, a a fair a fair lead time, roughly? No, not necessarily. It's a year um, because I guess of once once we have our product defined solidly. Um, the biggest problem is that. It, it's very dependent on the, on the size of the power application. Sure. So, I mean, we can if we define one product, then you know it may not may be too much for like a you know a application that's doing less than thirty watts, for example, or if you go way up there. Um, sure. sure. But um, but but yeah, the, I mean, just as a rough order of magnitude, it's not going to be like a Herculean redesign effort. No, no, no. Every no. It, time. It, once we basically once we have that that defined product, it'll take you know, once less than six months. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, really, right. what we're working on right now is building a platform. So, right. because exactly. the nature of the market is just that, you know, if you can't build one battery management system that'll work for all batteries. So, what we're working on is building a platform that you could either add things to or take things away, you know, depending on how large your battery pack is. Is it going to, you know, go in a solar application? Is it going to go in an electric vehicle like a golf cart? Is it going to, you know, so right. it could be retrofitted easily. So that's really what we're working on right now. Okay.
Well, Sammy, why don't you take it away on the uh, some of the power conversion topics? Yeah, so it seems like you've got a lot of, or one of your main applications is renewable energy. So mm -hmm. you have a wind turbine, wind picks up power, you know, your power source becomes available, wind dies down, your power dies, uh, and you're trying to charge or you're storing energy uh, through through these cycles. So how, how, how does that exactly happen? Is there... How do you charge your batteries? What type of type of topology do you use? How do you deal with this intermittent power coming in, coming out? And I would say, stay. Uh, you can stay narrowed to the the ones that you've actually done so mm -hmm. far. Okay. Well, for example, the a solar panel. Um, you know, it is dependent on the application. But like, for example, the one that we're working on now, um, it just it has a simple buck converter on there and it monitors the solar panel and tries to get the maximum power out of it and mm -hmm. maximum power point tracking is the idea that uh, we use there because then you get the most energy up into your battery pack during the day. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the type of things that we do there. Um, you know, you know, with a, a charger that we worked on that plugs into an outlet, that one's just a, a synchronous uh, a buck converter as well. So mm -hmm. um, our, our packs never have been higher than the source, so we never had to boost it per se. Mm -hmm. But, um, so that's, that's the type of tech, uh, top, topologies that we use. Okay, so, so if you have a battery pack, it's got multiple cells in it, uh, how do you keep each cell balanced? I guess that's the right word, so, so if the battery pack lasts the longest, do you do separate fuel gauging on each cell? How do you, what do you do right that other people do wrong? Sure, sure. Well, um, it's on a couple different levels. So the first thing that we start with is we do individualized management for each individual cell. And so and, it, and when you get into the actual technology about what we do that may be better than somebody else's, we employ these modeling techniques. So using, you know, a, micro, a microcontroller. And through that, we could actually learn how the cell performs over time. And from that, then you could drive, you could predict what the cell will do in the future. So that gets down to being able to predict cell failures before they happen. And so that is on the cell level, not just looking at the entire battery pack. It's for each cell. And then from there, we also have the capability to communicate that information wirelessly back to an interested user. So the owner of the battery pack could see, you know, on the Internet or on a website, um, well, hey, cell number 139 has had a failure or something like that. So. Okay. okay. And through those models, we have um, a damage, basically a damage rate sensor you can call it. Um, it allows you to kind of, you know, if the battery pack is being, or a specific cells are being used incorrectly, um, you can kind of tell or accumulate that and say, like, okay, well, this battery cell was used improperly and it is getting damaged and you can kind of use that as a predictor of the overall life of this, you know, of the cell. Yeah, and so, I mean, other people that are making battery management systems, a lot of people do individual cell monitoring and different mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. but um, some of the features that we boast of our accuracy with the models that we have, and then just also the fact that um, what we were talking about before, like, you know, the power coming in, the maximum power point tracking, if you have a solar panel, the, you know, the, the buck or the boost converter, um, it's the fact that it's all in one system working together. Whereas normally, um, if you want to set up, say, a, a solar panel with a battery pack, you have to go out and you have to buy different components and try to interface them. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of another one of our advantages is that we're putting it all in one package so that it's designed to work together. So you don't have to, it takes out the guesswork of, well, if I buy this maximum power point tracker, how is it going to talk to my battery management system? And usually mm -hmm. they don't talk to each other, mm -hmm. and that's a problem. So um, that, that's really what, what we're looking to do with our product. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what type of modeling tools do you use to, to verify the accuracy of your um, Well, we basically, we, we get data from the cell being used over a, a cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, you know, do various things to get various parameters of the cell. We actually use a, um, a linear squares, least squares model. Um, so we, we, we have a first principles model of the, of the cell. And then we fit, uh, based off the data that we get from the cell, we fit parameters so that the cell, um, basically its parameters are captured through the data and comparing to the actual model that we've gotten. Um, and then, so doing so, that, oh, I guess, stepping back, we also use um, an observer or Kalman filter, whatever you want to call it, 
to uh, monitor like the voltage of the self, for example, as feedback into our model so that it's uh, very precise and accurate. So it's constantly feeding back corrections mm -hmm. to our model to allow the, uh, the cell to have accurate um, state of charge estimates, state of health, and state of life. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right. Well, that's, uh, that was pretty comprehensive. So, so with the batteries that you guys have handled so far, um, you know, just what uh, what kind of you know chemistries have you seen, like lithium, you know, cobalt, and and I, I mean that's kind of the old old school battery lap, laptop battery type stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know, there's the the newer ones. Uh, so the phosphate right now. Mm -hmm. Oh right, the phosphates. Um, sure. And um, and then of course lead acid and, and all this type of thing. So, um, you know, what what have you guys worked with so far, and is are there any particular ones that it wouldn't work with? Any caveats? Sure, sure. Well, we've primarily worked with lithium iron phosphate batteries, um, but we've also done some work with um, actually nickel zinc batteries. Um, and it would definitely, we haven't done work um, specifically with lead acid, but it'd be very applicable to lead acid. So um, I wouldn't say that there would be a particular chemistry that we absolutely would not be able to work with. It's really right. kind of a form factor thing. Right. Um, and also components may change, values may change, the model of course would change. It's very dependent on chemistry. So uh, the details would be different, but the overall main basic concept would be applicable to, I'd say, venture to say just about any chemistry you could come up with. And, and, and I mean, right now we focus more on lithium-based because, you know, like you said, some, some of them are really explosive, uh, especially ones like lithium sulfur and lithium polymer. Um, but uh, like lead acid, it may not need as much management, but we found that although, you know, you, what people tend to do is overcharge them to, to balance them out, but you That's still, right. but still that, that uh, is not the most, you know, practical way for, um, for large battery packs where you get multiples and strengths. So, you st they still get damaged in, in some sense. Right. Mm -hmm. there's, so there's some um, some what is it? Uh, some electro degradation and right. hydrogen mm -hmm. generation some, and some gassing of mm -hmm. uh, electro mm -hmm. electro light inside there. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so you guys made a claim in your pitch, which I, I just have to, to give you a chance to clarify. You said mm -hmm. that uh, four times the battery life with using your technology. So so just uh, just to explain that um, that claim. Sure, sure. Well, essentially what we mean by that is not necessarily that you're going to take a battery and all of a sudden it's going to last four times longer and it's never, you're never going to have to charge it. Um, really what that means is it's what we're doing is we're optimizing battery performance. So typically if you have, say, a lithium iron phosphate cell and you put it out in the field with no management system, although on the data sheet it may claim a particular cycle life, um, if you don't have a management system on it, if it's not being optimized, and it's not going to reach that optimum cycle life. And so with a battery management system, what we're saying is that it will reach its full potential. So typically, um, if a battery has no form of management on it, it's going to last to about a quarter of its full cycle life. And so when we say um, opti you know, extending the life of a battery by a factor of four, we mean right. that. I, I guess, uh, let, let's be explicit. So that's mm -hmm. the life of a battery when it's in a pack, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when paralleled in, in series string, mm -hmm. um, that we get these... Uh, uh, the the probability of failure goes up more yeah. as you mm -hmm. introduce more parts uh, right. and that type of thing. So if you don't do this, you'll you'll see. Let's say, um, well, what, what would you typically? S so what you're saying is that you'll get four times the battery pack life if on a on a managed battery pack versus one which is not. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And um, and so. We, we've gone over, you do have state of charge, state of health uh, um, models which are embedded in the, the control system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether or not it's Coleman doesn't really matter, but yeah. um, all that kind of thing. Um, so, so you guys, uh, can you handle transients um, in terms of uh, individual transients, high transients, that type of thing, or is it just a long-term um, sort of general pack balancing technology? Some of by transients, you mean like, like uh, peak currents or right. surge currents and stuff surge, like that. Yeah. Um, so one of our applications that we did was a uh, electric uh, bicycle. So it does have surge currents um, as well as the Myers Motors, but, uh, okay. which is the, uh, the electric car. But those obviously have surge currents when you're accelerating, and um, so it, it we 
did in, embed into that application the sample rate of which to uh, catch those surges, and I incorporated that into our um, our model as well. Um, so it, that is important because you know if you don't catch those surges, if it's a huge one, for example, then you're you're missing out on a lot of energy going out of the battery pack, for example. So um, we have taken that into account and, and, and used it in some of our um, applications that we've worked with. So yes. And and like I said, with a even if our our model our, our predictions get off, um, what I was saying before is that we use feedback um, from actual data from the cell that we measure from the cell in order to correct our model if it is, does get off. So it's always correcting the model, I guess, to make sure that the estimates that we have are accurate. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, there's definitely there's some safety factor and, and all that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, I believe that that is everything. So this is Joe Gorse with Design World signing off. Thanks so much for coming in, guys.